Rules of Golf is produced and broadcast by the Zeus Net Radio Network for thegolfdirector.com. I'm Martin Woodhouse, and today we're going to talk about some rules. Um, last week, or over the last couple of weeks, uh, we've been talking a little bit about the principles behind the rules of golf, uh, the book by Richard Tufts, which uh, I encourage anybody who's a serious student of the rules to, to read. And uh, with the two great principles, just to refresh your memories, uh, number one is relates to rule one, and that says that you put your ball into play on the teeing ground, play only your own ball, don't touch it until you take it out of the hole. And we looked at that briefly last week, rule one. Uh, rule 13 uh, relates to the other great principle, and that is you play the ball as it lies. Uh, probably the most violated rule there is. It's a big rule. There are four parts to it. And um, we'll see how far we get with it today. I'm going to start with uh, Rule 13-1 and also get into some of the decisions uh, involved with that too. Uh, this is the decisions book, and um, there are 4,000 uh, decisions in here. A lot of them are related to Rule 13. There are actually uh, over 40 decisions attached to just the first part of Rule 13. So we're not going to read them all. We're not going to get through them all, but uh, uh, they all illustrate what we've been talking about about the principle. So hopefully, um, as, a, as I was saying before, we're not just trying to teach you the rules. I'm trying to educate you a little bit about the background to the rules and why they are the way they are and to make sense to them. So I'll relate back again to the... Uh, to the principles as we, as we go through. So well, I'll start by, by reading Rule 13.1. Uh, the name of the rule is Ball Played As It Lies. And again, it reminds you at the beginning of each rule, and I keep reminding you of this, about the definitions, the importance of understanding your definitions, and to help you, they are italicized. So uh, Rule 13.1, general, the ball must be played as it lies except as otherwise provided in the rules. Uh, and this is another thing about reading the rule as well. You'll, you'll come to a part and you'll think, okay, I've got it, that's the answer to the situation I'm in. But you really need to read all the way through because there are many times um, there are exceptions to that, except if you're doing this and doing that. So you've got to read the whole thing and not just stop where you get to what you think. I know, and Martin, uh, even that first part is a little bit confusing. It's, it is what it is, except for where else it isn't. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, that, <laughs> that's true. And as I said, the, you know, the, the, coming back to the principles, the, print, the, the rule book mm -hmm. is basically exceptions to the principle because you're not always able to play the ball as it lies. So the rules tell you what to do when you're not mm -hmm. able to do that for some reason. So 13.2, that's the big part of the rule. And it talks about improving the area, I'm sorry, improving the lie, the area of intended stance or swing or line of play. So just to, just to um, expand on that a little bit, there are four things you can't do really at any time, but again, there are exceptions, there's always exceptions. <laughs> you can't do anything that's going to improve the lie of the golf ball, rolling it around with the club, that kind of thing. Uh, the area of intended stance so where you're going to place your feet you can't you know move stuff out of the way unless it's loose impediment another exception uh, or your area of intended swing so if you're under a bush or something like that you can't stop breaking bits off of it you can't improve that or your line of play um, line of play is defined as being the direction you wish your ball to take. Uh, people always refer to things like line of flight. You're mm -hmm. not going to find that in the rules book. There is no reference to line of flight. It's line of play, and also on the putting green, it will be line of putt. So uh, these are the things you cannot improve. The position or the lie of the ball, the area of the intended stance or swing, line of play, or a reasonable distance of that line beyond the hole, or the area in which he is, he is to drop or place a ball. So if you're getting ready to uh, drop a ball, you can't do certain things 
to prepare that area. No fluffing. Where you're getting ready to drop it. Mm -hmm. There are certain things you can do, which we'll come to. Okay. Um, for instance, you can move loose impediments. Loose impediments, again, you're going to know that definition. Loose impediments is anything that is not fixed or growing, that's natural. And it's not fixed or growing. Things like leaves, twigs, pine straw, pine cones, those kinds of things. So you're always going to be able to move those except in a hazard. Mm -hmm. You can't do that in a hazard, but anywhere else you can. So those are the things you can't do. And then it goes on to uh, expand on that and say uh, you can't do any of those things by any of the following actions. And this is where people, you know, really... Breach the rule a lot. <laughs> Pressing a club on the ground. Now, you can ground your club, you can set it on the ground, but you can't press anything down uh, by moving, bending, or breaking anything growing or fixed, including immovable obstructions, it's a definition, and objects defining out of bounds. So, obstructions, you know what they are, right? No. no. Obstructions <laughs> are. Artificial things. Okay. They're man-made things. Uh, a cart path is an obstruction. It's man-made. Um, what about the 150 marker? You know when they have that pole sticking up in the middle of the fairway? So you can or cannot move that? Uh, well, you have two types of obstruction. You've mm -hmm. got a movable and immovable. A cart path is clearly immovable. Mm -hmm. You can't move it. Uh, a, a stake in the ground, as long as it's not defining out of bounds, is movable. Movable being, if you can move it without undue effort, and without damaging anything. So, yeah, you can, you okay. can move that. And it doesn't, have to be restri it doesn't have to be one of these things where it's improving your line of play mm -hmm. if it's just bothering you. If mm -hmm. it's a couple of feet away, um, so you're not going to hit it uh, or anything like that. You can still move that. Uh, hazard stakes, you can move those too. Again, a lot of people don't realize that. Even if you are in the hazard, we know you can't ground your club. We know you can't move loose impediments, but you can move movable obstructions. Okay. Movable obstructions. I didn't know that. Yeah. So you can move those red stakes if they're in your way, whether you're in or out of the hazard, provided they're easily movable, which Most they are, generally yeah. are. But yeah. not out of bounds stakes. So even if you're not out of bounds, right. but like well, the golf course I live on, mm -hmm. even the hole I live on, the uh, out of bounds actually curves around with the housing development. Okay. And so... Sometimes you can be in bounds, but there's an out of bounds stake in front of you. Right. Can't. Those stakes are not movable okay. obstructions. They are deemed to be fixed. Even if they are easily picked, easily up. picked up, they are deemed cool. to be fixed, and you cannot move them. Did not know that. Yeah. Um, I need to put a sign in my backyard. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> Do not move this. <laughs> Just, if just you, reference the rule. Put that on the side. That's right. right. There you go. Cannot move per rule. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's just a definition. Now, yeah. bound stakes okay. definition. So if um, here's an interesting kind of idea as well. If somebody were to move one and you say, hang on, whoa, 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 you can't do that. And he goes, oh, okay, sorry, I'll, I'll just put it back. Mm -hmm. No harm, no foul. Well, unfortunately, there Too is late. a foul because mm -hmm. you've already breached the rule. You've already breached the rules. So putting it back doesn't uh, get you off the hook on that in wow. that case. So these are things you cannot do to improve your area of um, uh, the lie area of intended swing or stance or line of play. You can't press a club on the ground. You can't move, bend, or break anything growing or fixed, including immovable obstructions. You're out of bounds stakes. And objects defining out of bounds, which are the same status mm -hmm. as those things. Other things you cannot do. You cannot create or eliminate irregularities of surface. So you can't step something down. Mm -hmm. Now, I know maybe what you're going to say, uh, what about on the tee? Well, there we go on to the exceptions. You can. On the tee and ground, you can press things down or okay. create an irregularity of surface. I actually personally, uh, if I'm hitting a fairway order a hybrid off the tee, I'm not going to use a tee. I'll just knock up a little piece of turf and, and set it, set right it up on the surface. So I've created an irregularity of surface. But I can do that within the tee and ground, which we talked about last week, defining the area of the, of the uh, tee and ground. Can, can I ask a question there? Of course. The, the, <laughs> I used to play with a guy that um, – let's take a fairway wood, for example. 
regardless of whether he was in the fairway or uh, in the rough, mm-hmm. he he would always step the grass, step on the grass in front or behind the ball before he struck the ball. Now that's uh, that's clearly um, pressing uh, pressing something down. That's improving the. Error of intended. Spot. So he didn't move the ball, but he stepped. He sure. stepped in for either in front or behind it. He's improved it, and and yeah. that's a penalty of. Yeah, that's a two-stroke penalty. All right, cool. It's the I general hope, penalty. I hope you didn't lose yeah. any money to him ever, because you need it all back. Yeah, I need to go back <laughs> with it with interest. I <laughs> with think. With interest. Yeah. Well, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, these are important to know, especially if you do have a yeah. little game on the line. That's actually the very next point there. Yeah. Maybe you, you, were you doing some homework reading ahead there, Jeff? No. <laughs> the <laughs> no, next one. So it was creating or eliminating a regulated service. And then the next one is removing or pressing down sand, loose soil, replaced divots, or other cut turf placed in position, or removing dew, frost, or water. So you cannot remove those. There is an exception on the teeing ground. You can do that. So those are the things you can't do, but this is where it, where, what I was saying about reading on. Mm-hmm. However, there's always a however. In there. <laughs> however, the player incurs no penalty if the action that we were just talking about occurs in grounding the club lightly when addressing the ball. So you can't press anything down, but you can set the club on the ground. Grounding the club basically means that the club is supported by Your the way the club still, is yeah. supported by the ground. The You're ground not actually in exerting any kind of pressure on there. So, um, so you're okay to do that. Set the club behind the ball. Fairly taking a stance. Fairly taking a stance. One of the decisions, if we get to it today, it runs to a whole page. Is what does that mean? Mm-hmm. What does fairly taking a stance mean? And it takes a whole page to explain wow. what that means. So, so uh, if I'm going to guess just a little bit again, that means fairly taking a stance doesn't mean you can really dig in like the batter does in the batter's box in right. baseball. Right. And, and it really, uh, again, a very common thing you'll see. Somebody will have a bush behind them or something like that, and you'll see them backing into it and bending things behind the back and stepping on branches just to kind of make way for the swing, that would be a violation of the rule. That would be a violation. You can get in there using the minimal intrusive way to get in there. And if some bending or breaking occurs during fairly taking the stance, you're going to be okay. When you start using your hands and lifting your leg and tucking things around and that kind of thing, then then we're going to have a problem. Ah. Um, generally, a rules official... If he sees you mm-hmm. taking a stance and, and your hands are off the golf club, uh, his antenna is going up. So th- my advice to you would be keep both hands on the golf club while you're taking this stance. Otherwise, you know, those hands get involved, you, you're going to be more than likely in violation of the rule. But as I say, we'll get to that uh, mm-hmm. decision, possibly, if we get that far today. <laughs> Eventually, we will get to that I, I decision. Know, it just, <laughs> it, it goes just, so fast. It, it, it truly does. So these are, again, we're, we're on the however part. These mm-hmm. are the exceptions. So you can ground the club. You can fairly take your stance in making a stroke or the backward movement of the club for a stroke, and the stroke is made. So what that means is if you were to break something, a, a twig or a branch or, or something like that, during the stroke, the stroke being, by definition, the forward movement of the club head with the intention of striking the ball, you're going to be okay because you're in the process of making stroke. But it also goes a little bit further and says if you're in the, um, in the backward movement for the stroke and something happens, as long as you keep going and hit it, you're going to be okay. So if you make a backswing and you break a branch and you stop, you violated the rule because you've improved your area of intended swing. Whereas if you break it on the backswing and continue on and hit it, it's not your intended swing anymore, it's your actual swing. Mm-hmm. So there is no violation. So, you know, if that happens. Um, here's a little thing where you can take advantage of the rules because, you know, often people think the rules are there to hurt you. They can help you too. Uh, an example of where this rule can help you is in a... 
um, well, the proper term for it is a sandy area through the green, mm -hmm. generally referred to as a waste area. Waste area is not referred to in the book. It's a sandy area through the green. So it's like a, a bunker-like area, but it's not a bunker. Mm -hmm. So you can ground your club. Now, if you've got a little mound of sand behind the ball, possibly, you can gently ground your club. You can't press anything down. In your backswing, and you can scoop that pile of sand out of your way to improve the area as long as you keep going and hit the golf ball. If you were to just do it and say, oh, I was just making a practice swing, now... There's a problem. There's a problem. But if you continue on, so that that might help you out sometimes, just to say, just to improve the area of, of swing, not the area of intended swing, but area of actual swing. So you're okay in doing that. Um, the other things... Uh, these are, the, again, the exceptions. There's no penalty. If you create or eliminate irregularity of surface on the teeing ground or in removing dew, frost, or water from the teeing ground. So that stepping behind the ball thing, Jeff, that's perfectly fine on the teeing ground, but nowhere else. And then the final, however, is on the putting green, removing sand and loose soil or in repairing damage. There's different rules, of course, that apply to the putting green, and sand and loose soil are loose impediments, which is something mm -hmm. that's natural but not growing, only on the putting green. Only on the putting green. So you can do that on the putting green, but not elsewhere. So that sand in the waste area, or mm -hmm. sandy area through the green, you can't brush that away. That's not a loose impediment through the green. It's only on the, green. on the putting green. And also, um, again, I do get asked this question sometimes, what if your ball isn't on the putting green? Can you still remove that sand and loose soil? Can you do that, Jeff, do you think? My, my guess would be no, <laughs> unless the ball's touching the green. You can. You can? You can, yes. Wow. You can remove sand on the putting green. Leaves. Period. And... Huh. Irrespective of where your ball lies. If... if uh... Well, then that leads me to another question. I hate this. <laughs> no, actually, I, I like love this. it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if my ball's not on the green yes. yet, it's on the fringe or it's, it's a foot off or mm -hmm. whatever, yeah. can I repair ball spikes? Ball marks? Yeah. I mean, um, no, I mean spike, uh, uh, shoe spike marks. Spike marks, no. Yeah. So you can't do that regardless. That would, be in, that would be improving your line of play. Whether you're on the green or not. Yeah. Right. Okay. And yeah. regardless of where it is on the green. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The only things you can do on the putting green – as regards improving anything, would be to move, remove the loose impediments. Um, you can fix ball marks. You can uh, the loose impediments being sand on the putting green only. There's a few other things you can do. We'll maybe get to those. There are seven actually, seven times. One of the prohibitions uh, under Rule 16 is touching your line of putt. You cannot, if you if you go with that, never touch your line of putt. You're going to be okay. But again, there are some howevers. Mm -hmm. Exceptions. There are seven of them, as a matter of fact, where it is okay to touch a line of putt. Now, improving, uh, pressing down spike marks is not one of them. Okay, so the guy, and you see this even on the tour at times, the guys who go halfway between the ball and the cup, and and they they um, they look they they put the putter down to make that stroke. Mm. That's that's one of those exceptions. It is not really. It is not because I've actually seen that. Yeah. They, uh, well, I think if you pay attention, I, I, they they they're probably not grounding. Their they're cup. not grounding it, huh? Yeah, they're not grounding it. But no, you can't. You the the line of putt is sacred. You can't, yeah. You can't okay. Do that. Um, just coming back to the sand um, through the green. So. Let, and it's, it's very common, of course, where somebody's played a bunker shot and they've dumped sand out on the green yeah. and on the fringe. Mm -hmm. The sand that's on the green, you can move. The sand that is not, you cannot move. And then there's a guy who doesn't bother to, to knock the sand off his spikes right. when, he, when he comes out of the bunker and on yeah. the green, tracks yeah. it all the way across yeah. the green. Right. And, and the loose impediments, or sand in this case on the putting green, you can remove by any means. By any means. So if you happen to have a leaf blower in your bag, you could use that. <laughs> That'd be okay. So towel. Yeah, glove, towel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They changed that rule. Uh, yeah, because I, th I, I thought I remember something about that that, yeah. that had changed. Yeah. They did change that. Uh, you can't remove um, – you could always remove obstructions using any means, like a towel, obstruction being something artificial. Yeah. 
um, but losing impediments, you could not. That changed, I want to say, 2004. Yeah, that's pretty recent, actually. Yeah, fairly recent. Yeah. So now you can remove those losing impediments by any means. But just going back to the sand thing, there is a, 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 an exception which highlights one of the principles we haven't gotten to yet. Uh, one of the principles in Tuff's book is you are entitled to the lie that your shot gave you. So wherever it happened to be and whatever the situation was, that's what you're entitled to. If something causes that to change, you can restore it. So in the example of somebody playing a bunker shot, if your ball is a foot off of the green, uh -huh. you're in the fringe there, and there's no sand, you've got a clean lie, but a fellow competitor, somebody you're playing with or your partner or opponent, he's in a bunker, and he plays that bunker shot, and he dumps sand all over your golf ball, and in your line of play, that wasn't there when your ball came to rest. So in that exam in that instance, you are entitled to restore the situation I to the way it did was. I not know that. If the sand was there first, you can't move it. Okay. If it comes there after your ball came to rest, you can. And there's a lot of examples where that'll happen, where your life mm -hmm. has been changed. And all of these things, by the way, it says it says improve or allow to be improved. In other words, you can't say, I'm not allowed to move this sand, but Shan, just come over here and brush that sand out of the way for me, would you? Mm. You can't allow somebody else to do it yeah. for you either. What if you're both in the bunker and someone hits mm -hmm. and changes everything about not like right. your lie and what's sure. in front of the ball That's and a great covers example. your ball, That's a great cetera. example of that principle. You're, you're entitled to the lie oh, okay. that you're shot getting. Even so in the you bunker. Would, you would recreate the lie. Okay. Recreate the lie. So if you had a bad lie, mm -hmm. you have to recreate that. <laughs> you'd, you'd get the. You'd have to recreate that bad lie. Okay. And, and there is actually a decision in there where um, a ball is in a heel mark mm -hmm. in a bunker, and there's another ball close to it. So you mark your ball to allow the other player to play. He plays it and makes it better. <laughs> um, you have to recreate. You have to actually make, make another heel mark. And, oh wow! And put it in there. Yeah, hmm. that's one of those decisions. So that's uh, thirteen two. How are we doing on time? We? We're getting close. We're getting okay. close. Yeah. So we might, if this is a good breaking point, we might want to save the next one unless it's quick. Uh, I'll let you make that decision. You know what's coming up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I'll just I'll just quickly read this. I, I keep getting okay. sidetracked. Uh, oh, you know, we do this. No, 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 <laughs> not, not at all. I keep sidetracking that's, myself too. So that's, that's, that's okay. That, that's what's so great about the show. That's okay. Yeah. So uh, this is the very first decision under thirteen two. I said there are over forty of them. Wow. Okay. Uh, this is thirty thirteen dash two slash zero point five. The question these are normally in a question and answer format. So mm -hmm. the question is: Rule thirteen two prohibits a player from improving certain areas. What does improve mean? What does improve mean? And the answer is, in the context of 13.2, improve means to change for the better so that the player gains a potential advantage with respect to the position or lie of his ball, area of intended stance or swing, line of play, uh, area in which he's going to drop ball. Therefore, merely changing an area protected by 13.2 will not be a breach of 13.2 unless it creates such a potential advantage. And there's a couple of examples here. I don't know if we have time to yep. do that. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. So here's some examples of changes which are unlikely to create the potential advantage. Uh, one being if you repair a small pitch mark on your line of play five yards in front of your ball prior to making a 150-yard shot from the green. You're not likely to prove anything. If it was a few feet from the edge of the green, you would. Uh, accidentally knocking down several leaves from a tree in the area of intended swing with a practice swing, but there are still so many leaves or branches remaining that the area of intended swing has not been materially affected. Um, and another example would be a player whose ball lies in thick rough, 180 yards from the green, walks forward and pulls strands of grass on his line of play, tosses them in the air to determine the direction of the wind. That would not materially affect anything. And then the examples of changes which might create an advantage would be the same things but in different circumstances. Repairing a pitch mark through the green five yards in front of the ball that's on his line of play such that the stroke might be affected by a putt or a low running shot. And the leaf thing, if you accidentally knock down a single leaf from a tree 
uh, with a practice swing, but this is one of very few leaves that might either interfere with the swing or fall and distract him. The area of, of intended swing has been materially affected. So knocking down leaves might be a violation, might not, depending on whether it materially improves anything. And then finally, pulling strands of grass from the rough a few inches behind the ball to test the wind, but thereby reducing a potential distraction for the player or resistance of his club, uh, that would be a violation. So those are three different acts, uh, which sometimes are violations, sometimes they're not, whether they would materially improve. So that kind of clarifies what we mean when we say improve. I see three very good opportunities for arguments should it not be in an official tournament where there's a tournament official. <laughs> <laughs> well, yep, for but, sure. <laughs> but that's where uh, playing with friends and making sure everyone's on the same page ahead of time uh, makes a lot of sense. That's why mm. I love this show. So we can clarify or at least bring to light a lot of the rules and situations that people do run into. Yes. Every day guaranteed the yeah. next time we go out and play golf, right, Jeff, we will be talking about you and your ears will be ringing because we're going to have so many more questions for you. <laughs> do we have his number Brilliant. on speed dial? We do. We will. We will. Most of my students do. I, I, no. I think I told you last week, Pretty, it's rare you the should. weekend goes by that I don't get a call. Absolutely. I, I love it. Thank you yeah. so much, Martin, for doing this. Okay. We're ready. We're done? Okay. Yes. I get to do the readout. You week. do. All right. I'm excited. Uh, TGD Radio and TV are produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for thegolfdirector.com. When visiting the Golf Director, navigate over to our featured golf course pages where you'll find up-to-date information about course conditions, specials, and much more. If you need help with your next golf vacation, give us a call. The number is 844-GO-GOLF-1. 844-GO-GOLF-1. That's 464-6531. All of the D, uh, DGD program is archived for listening and viewing on demand. To catch up on a show you may have missed, click on the DGD radio and the DGD TV tabs in the menu of thegolfdirector.com. This is Martin Woodhouse. On behalf of all of us here at The Golf Director, we thank you for tuning in. There's more TGD golf news and information coming up next. Stay tuned.